I just got a brand new MacBook Pro M3 Max, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through every single application I download to set up my new Mac to fit my developer workflow. So let's get into it. Just for a little bit of context, I am primarily a full stack web developer who has also been dabbling in a little bit more of React Native, specifically Expo and mobile app development for iPhones and Android. So as I'm setting up my laptop, it's primarily gonna be centered around that development workflow, but I also have some other non-developer specific, just general cool software and apps that I use on my laptop. So maybe you'll find this interesting to see what my workflow is like. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, so I've actually already set up my entire laptop, so I'm not gonna be setting it up from scratch with you, but I'll be going through all the little applications that I have downloaded to get to this point. So now let's first talk about my actual development setup, and primarily, let's talk about my text editor, which currently I use Cursor. Yes, it is really, really good. I don't care what you've heard. When I first heard about Cursor and how much hype it was getting, I was like, bro, is it really that much better than like GitHub Copilot? Come on, it can't be that good. Yes, it is. It's unreal. It's so, so good. Cursor has been my main IDE of choice for the past couple of months, and I personally think it's the best AI-powered text editor. Now, have I tried every single AI-powered text editor out there? No, but I do love the UI, just like being able to quickly chat with things here, then pulling up the chat window over here. Cursor Compose is really crazy too. I can make a whole video about Cursor. Let me know if you're interested in that. I'm not an expert, but I do use it pretty frequently to code. So big fan of Cursor. That is my preferred IDE, my preferred development environment. And I also still do have Visual Studio Code downloaded too, but I mostly have this downloaded because I use it to log into my GitHub profile because my entire VS Code profile is synced with VS Code. And then Cursor then has a setting where you can sync all of the VS Code extensions you have downloaded on VS Code with Cursor. So that's why I still do have VS Code available. Now, typically I usually do download another type of terminal. I used to be a diehard iTerm2 user, but then I recently switched over to warp.dev. But you know, actually with this brand new laptop that I got, I actually haven't downloaded warp yet or any other terminal. I'm still only have the normal built-in terminal. And a big reason for that is probably because I'm hardly ever in the terminal for the most part. I only use the terminal that's inside of the VS Code or Cursor IDE. So I don't really have a need to get another terminal. So I've just been sticking with the vanilla terminal for now. So the next application that I download is then this application right here, which is actually the same app that I'm using to record the screen and recording right now. It's called Screen Studio. It is the best screen recording software I have ever, ever seen, or just general video recording software. It's how I get all of these really fancy zoom in effects on any video that I've posted that has screen recordings, has this really cool, you know, like individual camera cutout as well. So it is a phenomenal piece of software. I've been using it for probably two years now. Highly recommend it if you are somebody that is doing a lot of screen recording or stuff like that. So Screen Studio is another essential piece of my workflow. Now the next piece of software that I wanna talk about is my favorite screenshot tool, which is called Snapper. Snapper.com with an X. It was made by this one really famous indie hacker. His name is Tony. Let me pull up his profile for you all. It was this guy right here, Tony Din. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name, but someone else actually bought it off of him. So he's no longer using it, but it is a beautiful, beautiful screenshotting tool. So the way that it works is let's say I want to take a screenshot of, let's say just this little bio right here. And then it creates this beautiful UI that you can tweak to fit any type of aspect ratio with a really nice background. You can set change the inset, change the rounded, change the shadow. You can redact sensitive data that's automatically there. You can also then format the screenshot for specific social profiles. And it's a phenomenal screenshotting tool. And it's called Snapper X-N-A-P-P-E-R. And yes, I did purchase this out of pocket. And I know another really popular tool is CleanShot. This is another really popular screenshotting tool. Honestly, if I didn't purchase Snapper, I probably would have purchased this one, but I'm really happy with Snapper and I just don't find a need to buy another screenshotting software um, right here. So that's my screenshot tool of choice. Let's actually go through all the applications that I've downloaded. Oh, this is one, Amphetamine. So Amphetamine is another Mac application that I like to download. And it's really, really simple what it does. Let me pull it up. I actually don't have it running right now. Essentially, it is just a tool that makes sure your Mac never goes to sleep. Yes, I know you can modify this down deep in the system settings and all that stuff, but quite frankly, I don't wanna do that. It's just a little Mac menu toolbar thing right here. You say, start a new session where I don't want my laptop to sleep indefinitely or for a certain number of minutes, hours, while a certain app is running, while a file is downloading. Really simple, but I like it a lot and I used it in the App Store for a very, very long time. You can download it on the Mac App Store. That's where I've been using it. And it's a super simple tool, but I get a lot of usage out of it. Now, coming up, let's see what other more developer specific things is pretty nice. I, oh, Descript. So Descript is my video editing software tool of choice. But what's more interesting about Descript, actually, if you know Loom, which is like the video record 
screen recording software that lets you share video links to anyone you like. Descript is my video editing software of choice, but it also has like a loom type of feature built into it. So as you can see, I also have Docker downloaded, but I gotta admit, I'm not the biggest like Docker expert, Docker power user, but I primarily use Docker because I use Supabase as the back end for my latest web app slash mobile app, which by the way, is called Monty. You can download it in the app store, Google Play store, as well as check it out at Monty.ai. It's a tool to make working in corporate America easier. AI powered audio transcriptions, AI powered chatting with your PDFs to get all the insights that you want. A lot of great tools bundled into one. Check it out, Monty.ai. And so I really just use Docker to power my local Supabase instance because for local development with Supabase, it's all done via Docker. So that's why I really have it downloaded. I don't really use it too, too much other than that though. Now moving on lately, I've been on a little bit more of a privacy kick and the VPN of, and my VPN of choice recently has been Molvad, M-U-L-L-V-A-D VPN. I think it's really great. Now, granted, I'm not a privacy expert. And the biggest reason why I use Molvad VPN is because Jack Dorsey endorsed it. And he's kind of really big into the whole idea of decentralization and privacy. So who knows? I could be getting sold snake oil, but I think it's pretty good. I think if you look it up on Reddit, it's pretty well reviewed, especially compared to other VPNs out there. So I use Molvod. It's pretty good. The speed's pretty great as well. I don't have too many issues with it. For my password manager, I used to be a one password user, but then recently in the latest iOS and macOS versions, Apple came out with their dedicated passwords app. And I've kind of just gone all in on passwords as my dedicated password manager, just because of the deep integration with Apple. And I'm pretty bought into the Apple ecosystem at this point. Now, another cool little application that I use that you might not be familiar with is called rectangle this little tool right here it's essentially a tool that lets you snap windows with keyboard shortcuts a lot more quickly and that's a lot faster compared to the native mac way of doing it which is like dragging it to the top or like dragging it off to the side yeah i personally just find it faster having these keyboard shortcuts and you can modify it to do a lot of different customizations like the first third second third last third two thirds max left right bottom center half it is completely open source and free. I don't pay for it. And I've been a rectangle user for a very, very long time. And that is about it in terms of dedicated apps that I download. But there is one small thing that I do that I also want to highlight that I think is a, a bit of a cheat code in my opinion. Well, not really a cheat code, but it's a small thing that I find a lot of use from. So if you go over to the modifier key, I basically flip the functionality of my caps lock key and my control key. And the reason why I do this is because I never really use caps lock and I use control way more frequently. And I think the placement of the caps lock key on your standard Mac keyboard is way easier to press than the standard control key. So I just flipped the two because I hardly use caps lock, but I use control a lot more. And I just wanted to make it a little bit more ergonomic to quickly hit the control key whenever I want. And I do that by hitting the caps lock button. So I've been doing this for probably a decade at this point, just switching the modifier keys of caps lock and control. Honestly, that's about it in terms of the software that I download on my Mac. I really don't go to crazy. I don't have an insane NeoVim config. I don't download too much software. Recently, my big motivating factor, my big mantra of life in general, especially when it comes to development and work is to keep it as simple as possible. We try to go for zero setup required. I try to go as close as I possibly can to go zero setup required to get my computer up and running to start coding and developing apps. Obviously, there are some other things that I haven't mentioned here, like the classics, like downloading homebrew and downloading node, all of that stuff. But that's kind of a given, I think. And these are some of the other apps that you may or may not have heard of. That's how I set up my laptop. Very minimal, very simple, but very, very fast and productive in my opinion. So that's my laptop setup. Let me know what yours is. What are some of your favorite apps that maybe I didn't mention or you want other people to learn more about? Leave them in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.